Well, good evening. For the first time, Alec Murdoch's attorney addressed the fact his client is a person of interest in his wife and son's murders, but... He denies any involvement, any knowledge. He found them. Somebody out there is responsible for the death, uh, the horrible, almost execution-style deaths of Maggie and Paul. It's not Alec. So who killed Maggie and Paul Murdoch in Calton County this past June? We'll have to wait for SLED to complete its investigation. But in the meantime, Dick Harputlian is trying to simmer rumors surrounding his client. Our Amy Russo has some revelations about the twisted facts in this case. It's a story you'll only see on ABC News 4. Attorney Dick Harputlian appeared on Good Morning America on Friday to set the record straight about claims made against his client, Alec Murdoch. In a story that seems to unravel by the day, it's no surprise the public is coming up with theories about what really happened. Thirst for knowledge about this case has driven a number of outlets to say things that are false. One of the most talked about situations, was Alec Murdoch really shot in the head? He suffered a bullet wound to the head. And uh, so Eddie, Eddie Smith's uh, not telling the truth. Um, and uh, obviously he's got reasons not to tell the truth. Curtis Eddie Smith, the man accused of shooting Murdoch, has publicly denied that claim. This is what Smith told us exclusively on September 20th. It's crushing to know that, that evidently I mean nothing to nobody, especially him. I have no ill will towards the man whatsoever. When Murdoch appeared in court on September 16th, he was not wearing a bandage, nor did we see any visible injury. And we furnished to you this morning medical records from the hospital uh, which indicate he had two bullet wounds in the head, his skull was fractured, he had a brain bleed, um, and um, uh, uh, he was put in ICU because his life was in danger as a result of being shot in the head. Smith's uh, bullet did not penetrate his skull. It did fracture his skull. It left what we believe is an entrance and exit wound on the side of his head. Now that he's charged with two felonies, did Alec Murdoch take millions in insurance money meant for his housekeeper's sons? His attorney says he'll address that the next time he's in court. He has indicated clearly uh, that he is going to try to right every wrong, uh, financial wrong, uh, and others that, uh, that, that he may have committed. And we start with a 17-year-old girl who's supposed to be in high school, was being sex trafficked and fed drugs, according to federal prosecutors. They said it was how a Hardyville man made his living. Investigators also say a Mount Pleasant businessman was involved. Ryan Emerson was in court and has the unsealed indictment. And well, yes, Tessa, yesterday we told you about this man. This is Dawson Caldwell. Now he's accused of trafficking a minor for sex. He's also known as Chuck Ashley. And now we know a grand jury handed down an indictment against him and another man, Cedric Riley. It's a case that's got the feds attention back in April when a 17 year old girl was rushed to the hospital with appendicitis. The feds say it was when that girl was going under anesthesia, about to go into surgery when she asked a nurse to help her. In court, an investigator from Homeland Security said the girl told the nurse she was forced to have sex with 10 to 15 men a day and she was being controlled with cocaine and fentanyl. The case was reported to a sex trafficking hotline and while investigators got involved in May, they say the abuse began in fall of 2020 and happened in numerous parts of the low country. In the hearing, investigators referred to Riley as her handler. They said Caldwell was a co-conspirator. Conspirator, A federal grand jury indicted Caldwell on charges of human trafficking, prostitution, and child pornography. Riley was indicted on a firearms offense, human trafficking, and prostitution. Another name came up in court today from Riley's messages demanding the girl be returned to him. We're trying to figure out who that is and if that person is under investigation or has been charged. Caldwell has a hearing in federal court tomorrow. What's the protocol if hospital staff suspects a case of child sex trafficking? And what signs we can look out for? Our Tara Jabor is working for you. Find out. Sex trafficking, unfortunately, is growing exponentially, not only um, here in Mount Pleasant and Charleston area, um, but really it's growing everywhere. Dr. Stephanie Armstrong is an assistant professor of nursing at MUSC. She says in this case, the nurse did the right thing by calling the sex trafficking hotline to help the minor. 
And oftentimes, you know, there are not protocols or policies in place. So we recommend that they do reach out to the National Human Trafficking Hotline um, because they can help guide healthcare professionals through the process of what to do. Dr. Armstrong says it's common for victims of trafficking to go to the hospital. Victims of human trafficking will actually uh, face um, violence and abuse from either their trafficker or if they're being sex trafficked um, from the Johns that purchase their services or from their bosses if they're being labor trafficked. There are signs that point to someone is being trafficked. They're with a person who tends to be somewhat domineering and maybe is answering all the questions for them or Maybe the patient looks to this other accompanying person um, every time before they answer a question. Healthcare workers can also listen to someone's story and check injuries to see if they line up. I like to look for people who have had medical or dental neglect. And so maybe they had something that we see an old injury that didn't heal properly because they were never able to receive care for it. Dr. Armstrong says it's important for people to look out for those red flags and report it if you see it. It's really important that people understand that this is happening every day and among the people that we live and work with. And, you know, to really keep our eyes open and if we see any red flags, and the National Human Trafficking Hotline is 888-373-7888. According to statistics from the organization, in 2019, 635 people contacted the agency about sex trafficking in South Carolina. The most common form is sex trafficking, followed by labor trafficking.